Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all well. Thank you all for joining me this uh, this morning. I'm I'm one tomorrow. I can leave the house that I'm in because I've been in a, a lockdown because someone started showing symptoms um, in our household. So super excited to get in the outside. Um, but really excited to have all of you here. Just to, to let you all know, there's, there's over 100 recruiters in here. So um, I want this to be interactive. Um, I want you guys to get involved as much as possible. So just a, a bit of housekeeping. Um, where I'd love all of you to, to get involved and answer the questions that I ask is, yeah, where Tessa has just messaged. So um, let me just show you, answer my questions here so in that public chat where everyone's saying morning obviously you guys can speak but if i sort of ask you guys to sort of share your thoughts or what do you think that is where i would love you to to put your message um and then the other part is you should be able to see a q a um so i've already put a question here so let me do it again questions ask your questions questions here so you can send your questions on the q a part whenever you want um and i'll i'll keep a, an eye on those and i can answer them as i go through this but what you can do is actually upvote the the question so you can see the questions i've got here i can upvote them so if you see people ask questions that you really like then um you can go in there and uh, ask your questions so that's a bit of housekeeping um as i said i want it to be interactive um but why don't we just start everyone's already saying hello why don't we just start um with i'd love to know where uh, you guys are based where you're currently basing yourself out of uh this morning and how your monday was so feel free to to jump in the the public chat and just share where you're currently based um, and what um, how your Monday was. <laughs> how is how was everyone's Monday been yesterday? And where the hell are you recruiting out of? Philip, Steve, Bristol, James, Brighton, Watford. How were your Mondays? Longwell Green, massive. Okay. Birmingham, Brighton. Good morning from evening from Melbourne. Emma, thank you so much for tuning in. Based in Amsterdam. Monday was good. Monday was productive. That's good. Hertfordshire, out of my kitchen. Monday was good. Picked up. Okay. Lowe's, cooped up in our box room. Monday was great. Keeping the positive vibes. Right. Okay. Hopefully, I can help with uh, this. Warrington, I've been to Warrington, not much in Warrington, based in Leeds. <laughs> My Monday wasn't very motivating. Well, hopefully we can help with that, Alice. I cleared out my spice drawer. Wow. Horsham, bedroom recruiter. Monday was okay, missing the office vibes. Definitely same, missing the office vibes for sure. People being kicked out of my study by other half. Love that, Martin. Good to see you. Wicked. Right. So, so chat's in there. Q&A. Whenever you want to ask your questions, do that. Um, but thank you so much for joining me. So as I go into the objectives here, as I go into the objectives, a lot of you have asked some really good questions. So just to frame this up, I plan on doing more of these. So if I don't get the opportunity to answer your question, I will do my utmost to follow up after this webinar and answer it to you personally. But there's clearly loads of stuff that you guys would really like some advice on or help with on the personal branding piece. So um, with that, what I've done today, the first one of these is I have focused on what the hell you guys can be doing today to give value to your market, share content, build your brand, when everyone is talking about the coronavirus and LinkedIn is super noisy, right? So that, that's that been my focus. Um, and yeah, so the objectives today, really simple, is 
just I really want all of you today, the fact that you're here says a lot, but I want you all to understand the actual opportunities that you all have to build your brand as a recruiter. That's where I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to give you some just real practical tips and ideas on how you can start building your brand today, tomorrow, within the current landscape. Um, and hopefully, um, all of you can leave excited to start sharing content on LinkedIn. And that does not mean start sharing your job post. That doesn't count. And hopefully, we can uh, have some fun. I didn't really, I didn't enjoy school. So for you to be in your bedroom right now, wherever you are, to feel like you're back at school would be my worst nightmare. So hopefully that that doesn't isn't the case. So I'm gonna start with I'm gonna start I've got a QA. Okay, cool. So the questions are coming in. Um loads of stuff in here already. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at those. So let I'm just gonna crack on with this and start with my story. So just to give you a bit of context because I, I've been in your shoes and it's important for you to know that. So what what's my story, right? So quite simply it started with a dream i realized today that on pdfs and slides the gifts don't work which is really annoying but we've all we've all seen that leonardo da vinci scene wolf of wall street spraying the cash um and my i my recruitment journey really did start with a dream um and that was the the recruitment dream i worked in the insurance industry and one of my friends who um then left the insurance industry said to me Hisham I think you'd be good at recruitment and I was like okay tell me more I'd love to know more about it and what he proceeded to tell me was the typical you're gonna earn a shitload of cash in your first year we're talking six figures you're definitely gonna go to Ibiza and you should be able to afford a Rolex now the reality of that was was more this that was my car a Renault Clio um and I had a gift there which didn't really work um but I didn't I didn't make much money at all my first year was really tough and I could definitely afford um Casio Leonardo da Vinci yeah definitely fucked that up <laughs> and um, um and it was it was a really tough first year in 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 recruitment and my my biggest challenge was I couldn't get hold of enough clients and candidates that I could help. That was my biggest challenge in, in my first year in recruitment. So in my first year in recruitment, I made zero pounds out of LinkedIn. I recruited in the insurance market. Every single person I spoke to hung out there. And how I got taught to use LinkedIn, I joined a, a small business and I learned from everyone within my four walls, Elliot Stutchbury, one of those who just messaged, um, and how I got taught to use um, LinkedIn was very simple. Hisham, when you get a job, post about it. Okay, I'm gonna do that, really easy. When you send out LinkedIn in mails, don't copy and paste the whole message. Send out as many as you can, try and make them personal, um, and that was my LinkedIn training, right? That's how I used it. Um, but first year in recruitment, I made zero pounds out of LinkedIn and in my office, people were having some success in using LinkedIn, but we definitely weren't using it effectively besides the normal routes that no doubt all of you guys do, which is in mails, being proactive, using all the same tools that every single recruiter has, right? So going into my second year in recruitment, um, my old boss said to me, look, Hisham, I've seen a lot of recruiters in my time. Um, you need to keep doing what we've taught you, which is smashing the phones, database, switchboards, job boards, wherever it may be, just keep smashing the phones. It's going to pay off. All right. You've got that. You've got the work ethic. You put in the volume of activity in recruitment is a long game. Keep doing what you're doing and it will pay off. Right. And I was in a small business. So, of course, I was going to take on that advice and listen. Um, and that's what I continued to do going into my second year in recruitment. But what I decided to do was think about what else could I do to give myself the best possible chance of having more success in recruitment. And what it came down to was LinkedIn, essentially. That was the only other tool that I could maximize that I had at my fingertips. So I, I went outside of my four walls of um, recruitment and looked at what my competitors were doing, right? And this was the light bulb moment. So this picture here is meant to go ting, like a light bulb. But what could I learn from my competitors, right? 
And what I saw um, was that moment where I was like, hang on a minute, there's a huge opportunity here. So this is what I saw. And I took these uh, screenshots not too long ago. These were my competitors um, back in the day. Um, and it was just the same old shit. I'm working with a well-established insurance broker. I'm recruiting, look to speak to candidates, just, just terrible job posts, right? And um, I know, having worked in recruitment for a year, I now knew this didn't make money. None of us in the office made a single placement by doing one of these fantastic job ads, right? But that's how I was using it, and that's how I got taught to use it. And I was that person that I was I was using LinkedIn the exact same way, um, and that that was the light bulb moment for me because um, I knew that if I could if I could use LinkedIn in a different way and gain a competitive advantage against his competitors then I was up for that. I don't know what other people's markets are like, but for me, um, if I didn't get a client or candidate exclusive, they were gonna get contacted by those guys that I just showed you. I knew who they were, I knew who their names were, and I fucking hated them. I would do anything to beat my competition or to have an upper hand or have a competitive advantage. Um, so that's when I made the decision that I'm gonna use LinkedIn differently. And, and that was the opportunity that I saw. And my whole motivation was, to, to stand out against my competition, right? So um, my content journey didn't start with videos. It was actually pretty cringy, right? So the next couple of slides are just me documenting my journey and what I started sharing content um, and what that looked like. I definitely didn't start with videos. I was too scared to do that. Um, and a lot of people think that they need to start with videos to, to get started, but they most certainly do not. What I started with was quite quite cringy, so hopefully you can all see that. But if you can't, it's very simply me saying, if you hate Mondays, love Mondays again. That's how creative I was <laughs> at the start. Um, I just didn't want to talk about jobs. That was the one rule that I gave myself. So what I started to do, um, and this was when we was allowed to go outside more than once and touch people, um, I started to document what I was up to in the market. As I said, I recruited in the insurance market and something that we were really passionate about and what we sold to our clients and candidates, which I'm sure a lot of you do as well, is we actively get involved in our industry. We attend networking events, we attend learning seminars, we actively contribute to the industry that we recruit in and get involved with. Um, so what I started to do, and I had already been doing this in year one, was I just made sure that I became that annoying person that took a picture. Guys, can you just take a picture while we're doing this, blah, blah, blah. And some of these um, posts, which um, very quickly started to gain more engagement um, and were different, um, <clears throat> were just simple pictures of what we're doing in the, in in the industry. So far left, me and my old boss and old colleague at a learning seminar, in the middle it was me and my client, um, and then on the far right it was a candidate that I placed that I took out for, for drinks. Um, so I started to to get better at sharing content on LinkedIn that wasn't just job posts, and it started with no creative input. It started by me documenting my journey as a recruiter and what I was up to in the market, what I was doing, um, because I wanted to make sure that what I was saying on the phone and what I was saying in the meetings, that I was someone that's passionate about the industry, I get involved, I meet my clients, I meet my candidates, I attend learning seminars, I get involved in my industry, was also demonstrated online. And um, to to because that was the persona that I wanted to create, and that and and it was true because that's what I was doing. So I wanted to make sure people knew that. So I then start to build some confidence. Right, this is this is the thing. When you start, which is the hardest part, when you start sharing content, you then become more confident with it, like anything. Right. So I then decided to to start sharing um, some videos. I had the genius idea that we're going to start sharing videos. This was back end of 2017. So this is, I couldn't even um, share videos from my own profile at this point. My old boss had to share it. Um, and the idea here was, was really simple. I didn't really enjoy writing, I hated writing CVs. And I thought if I can share video content and get myself across um, in a minute, two minute video and get my personality across, I think that sounds like a good idea. Um, so I started sharing videos. Um, I very simply started with an introductory video, um, which I st still now recommend to people in terms of doing an introductory post. Um, and I just started with 
look everyone i've been connected with you for a while this is this is me this is the industry that i came from this these are the people that i now help these are the businesses that i now help and i'm going to be sharing more video content any feedbacks welcome any ideas etc and then i just came up with ideas from the conversations like the interview feedback really simple quite generic one um but it was something that we were really passionate about so i just wanted to sh sort of share that journey there where i didn't start by sharing videos I started by talking about hating Mondays, love Mondays again, and being a bit cringy to documenting what I was up to in the market um, and then building confidence from there. And sort of through that process, I got better at understanding what worked, what didn't, what driving more engagement in my market and these types of things, right? So um, during this process, some of you may know or listen to the podcast that I host. <coughs> and this is something that I always say to my clients and recruiters to bear in mind is that when you start putting yourself out there, getting out your comfort zone and sharing content, the thought of, once you've actually done that, the thought of starting a podcast, an event series, doing a webinar, it doesn't become as um, frightening. It doesn't become, it doesn't appear as much as a challenge if you've already put yourself out there, right? So this is the thing here, loads of recruitment businesses do it, host events and they're really successful and they do really well. But I guarantee you, if you've got used to putting yourself out there, sharing content, these ideas that you may have uh, are, are not going to be, you're not going to be as scared to do them, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And, and that's definitely what happened with me. So through that process, I started the podcast, which is called the Recruitment Rollercoaster Podcast. And that's had a huge impact on, on my career and sort of where I've ended up. Huge impact. And that just became from me making that single decision of I'm going to use LinkedIn differently. And the one rule I'm going to give myself is, is no more jobs. So it then led me to take my um, job at Hoxo Media. I moved up to London um, and I joined an inbound marketing agency that exclusively worked with the recruitment industry. That's what um, I did for um, just over a year. And then it then it's then led me to, to start my own business. And that's really simple. It's to help passionate recruiters build their personal brands so they can reach more people they can help impact more lives and in turn make more money which is obviously the punchline as we want this branding and your brand to coincide with everything else that you're doing and we want it to be a solid part of your toolbox to help you build money as a recruiter right so that's that's just sort of my story as to <coughs> how i got to where i got to today so this is what I want you guys to let me know. And I'm going to look at the questions in a sec. Like, what is your perception of personal branding? Like, share with me in the, in the chat. Like, what does it mean to you? What does personal branding mean to you? It's, it's definitely a buzzword. A lot of people talk about it on LinkedIn. You may have seen it pop up way more often over the last year or so. But what is your perception of personal branding? What does it mean to you as a recruiter? Paul Kelly, it's everything. Yeah. Anyone else? I'm going to look at these questions. What do you recommend? Okay, cool. Some good questions there. It's everything, especially in your set, and you have more value to add. How many of my market know about me? Reputation. Matthew Goddard, I'm going to get on ROI for sure. Having an opinion, authenticity, being authentic. Yeah catchphrase is past brand how you perceive by your clients can it's in the market from your online presence yeah okay cool sweet so and i think we can all agree right that <coughs> why that's important as a recruiter is it's it's fucking saturated like it is it, very competitive and i think look you could google right now how many recruitment businesses there are in in the uk alone and you're going to get all different numbers but i think it's safe to say that it's a lot we're talking easily circa 30,000 recruitment businesses, let alone how many recruiters. So it's competitive, right? Which is why it's important. It's important that you can reach as many people as possible and for these people to have some sort of perception of you um, online. So perfect. Thank you all for, for sharing that. That's great. So <coughs> for me, quite simply, this is the really simple definition. It's, it's what you guys said. Personal branding is a practice of marketing people and their careers as brands, right? It is not rocket science. Ultimately, it's all about you, what people say about you when you're not in the room, how you're perceived and what makes you, you. So we get that, right? It's, it's not rocket science. You will understand that. And we understand why it's important. So just to sort of tie us all together, these are the people that come to mind for me 
when I hear the word personal brand, the likes of Gary Vaynerchuk, Will Smith, Dwayne Johnson, Conor McGregor, Kylie Jenner. <coughs> and for me, the real power in this, guys, is that it's that whole cliche, people buy from people. Um, and your clients, your candidates, they work with you, which is an extension of the business that you work for. But ultimately, these people work with you as recruiters, right? And you have those relationships. So the real power in this is that people, human beings, can drive emotions, can drive feelings, can drive people to do stuff um, and feel certain things um, and perceive you in certain ways way easier than a company can, right? You're a human being at the end of the day, which is why there's a lot of power in Conor McGregor starting a, a whiskey brand tomorrow making a shitload of cash, right? Because all of a sudden people think, if I buy that, then I'm, I'm like Conor McGregor, right? So being like people buy from people and th this is why it's really powerful right even more so in in recruitment so we understand that and this is just the punchline really and this is what i've recognized sitting down with loads of recruiters um and some of you have probably been in in the recruitment industry longer than i have but the best recruiters 100 percent already have a personal brand it's their reputation it's why they get referrals it's you delivering for your clients and candidates however typically what i found um is a lot of recruiters brands has remained offline and what i mean by that is your reputation how you're perceived how clients and candidates talk about you is staying and residing within the one-on-one -on -one phone calls it's staying in the one-on-one -on -one meetings it's staying in the four walls of your meeting rooms that's where it's staying right now because a lot of you if i were to look at your linkedin profile right now now and to see who you are and you just called me right if you give me if you bd me and i look at your profile who's this calling me what recruiter blah 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 and i look at your profile i guarantee you're going to look like just the next recruiter right even though when we get on the phone you're going to tell me this is why i'm different this is how i work this is what i'm passionate about this is how i deliver for other people etc etc right so for me all of you already have a reputation you already have a personal brand but a lot of the time it, it, it's just stayed offline right and and this is the whole sort of piece here now why the the, the 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 shop front window the, your online presence needs to make sure that it's communicating the things that you're going to be saying on the phone um and that's that's the opportunity at the end of the day so and next i'm going to wrap up with this but an exercise that i would love you all to do because it's eye-opening and it should hopefully motivate you is this is Every single recruiter that I work with, I get them to send me two direct competitors, actual individuals, not businesses. And what I will do is look at what they're doing online. What are what are your competitors doing in your market? How are they leveraging LinkedIn? What are they talking about? How are they using it? And I've seen easily well over 200 recruiter profiles now by doing this. And honestly, they all look the same. 95% of recruiters on LinkedIn you may not think it if you're connected with Rex or you're connected with some of the suppliers you may think everyone's doing video now and all these types of things but honestly they're not they're, there's hu humongous amount of opportunity right now for you guys to cut through and stand out amongst your competitors and yes LinkedIn is very noisy right now but trust me I would really recommend just having a quick look at okay what are the people doing that I come up against actively in the market um, and hopefully that would leave you guys motivated to take action um, and I do that because that's what I did for myself and it was a huge motivator for me. It really was. So that's one of the exercises that I would, I would love you to, to look at um, and do after this webinar. So let's look at, I'm just gonna look at some of the questions. Are you sending these slides out so I can remember it or? Yeah, so I will be sending all the um, slides out and I've got some stuff to, that you can all download as well after this. So I'll give all of this out. So. Let's move on. So when I started my business, I wanted to come up with a really simple process that I can communicate to recruiters about and take them through when working with them. Because honestly, you guys are smart. This is not rocket science. It's just understanding how to start, what to start with, and these types of things, which is typically the challenge. But the proven process that I've taken a lot of recruiters through now um, is what I like to call the three P's for building your personal brand. And I'm going to touch on some of these today. P for purpose, P for plan, P for paying forward, right? And that's more of a mindset piece. So the first part 
is P for purpose. So like anything, right, even more so in times like this, and I'm definitely challenging, um, I'm definitely finding it challenging, but right now in the current market, you need to understand why you're doing what you're doing. Like if, if you're not sure on why you're doing what you're doing right now, it's going to be difficult to be motivated every single day in your living room on your kitchen desktop, right? So for me, building your brand as a recruiter needs to be more than just to make your manager happy or I'm doing it because my boss said I need to do more on LinkedIn, right? So those questions there, why do you want to invest in your personal brand and how do you want it to help you in your recruitment career is something that you should really think about and understand. And that's just going to help you understand um, why you want to do more on LinkedIn and why building your brand is important because when you when you do share content and you feel like no one is listening which I certainly did at the beginning when not many people engage with your content you don't get as many likes as you wanted you don't get as many comments um if you're not really sort of honed in on why you're doing it and why it's important to you um there's going to be a good chance that you're going to stop before you've even started right so I'd really encourage all of you to just understand why you're here today, why you want to learn about personal branding and, and why how you want it to impact your recruitment career. And yes, we want it to help you make more money, but I think it's got to, there's got to be a bit more to it than that because you definitely do recruitment for more than just the money, right? <clears throat> so I'm gonna segue into um I'm gonna segue into like right now, like my 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 opinion on sort of what your branding efforts should look like and just my thoughts really which I want to share with you and then I'll, I'll segue into questions because there's quite a few in there so we'll do that um Matt Alder you've got a dry cough have you been tested for corona yet <laughs> cheers mate uh no I haven't been tested come on I can't say that every time someone coughs now it's a bit, a bit harsh um so for me right now this is my opinion on how you should be thinking about your branding efforts and how what your mindset should be towards personal branding like for me your objective right now should be the sort of analogy i try to use is, is be the lighthouse of your market and what i mean by that is yes we can talk about coronavirus yes we can talk about work from home and your market are definitely thinking about these things but for me the opportunity that you'll have and how you should be approaching this is like you guys should be the place where candidates and clients are going to hear about the challenges people in the market are currently facing, the solutions that you're hearing on the phones, on the video calls, how people are onboarding people remotely, how people are interviewing remotely. What are the solutions that your hiring manager, your candidates are coming up with that you're speaking to on a daily basis? What do they look like? Um, and also to, to be communicating and sharing content around how people are adapting in your market right um and that that for me is sort of what the mindset should be towards your personal brand right now become that lighthouse of your market become the place where people go to to learn from other people and what other people are doing in these challenging times um matthew goddard should you keep it strictly business related or would you also include personal content for more authenticity i get this question a lot and honestly matthew and anyone else that's thinking that um for me, I'm, I'm sure like you've seen it on LinkedIn, like that sort of everyone used to go, LinkedIn is business, Facebook is personal, right? They're very, they are hundred percent crossing over. And I think I'd, I'd like to think it's safe to say that they've always sort of crossed over. Like me as a work person is definitely sim. There's definitely similarities to me as um, just down the pub with my mates. Um, and I think that's very much crossing over. So I think being human on LinkedIn um, and sharing, if you want to call it personal content, is 100% something that you should be doing. Um, and I think there's nothing wrong with that. I think all I would say, um, Matt, and hopefully other people benefit from this, just because I had that question, I think it's valuable, is that let's say, for example, I took a, I, I took a picture um, right now of, of me going for a walk um, on, on the beach right in my one dose of exercise uh, that I get and I took a picture and let's say I posted that on Instagram or Facebook the caption that I may put on that is views 
that's a caption I might use that because I think that sounds a bit cool and I want people to look at me and go, oh, I wish I was at a beach like that, right? But if I use that same picture and posted it on LinkedIn, all we've got to do here is be a bit smart and, and respect the people in the room, the people that are hanging out on LinkedIn and use the context of that to understand what we should be talking about. So what I mean by that is if you, you could use that same picture, post it on LinkedIn and say, really grateful at the moment to be able to um, walk in these sorts of places, in this one dose of exercise at the moment. Um, one of the challenges that I'm having right now, working from home is work-life balance. I'm working in the kitchen, I'm working in the living room, I'm finding it hard to switch off. Some of the things, some of the things that I've started to do and implement in my day is I've done a bit, I've made sure I do some exercise in the morning, and I've made sure I always go for a walk on a daily basis. This is how it's sort of helping me get through the challenging times at the moment and help with that work-life balance. How are other people managing their work-life balance at home? Same picture, same picture, but you're talking about it a bit differently, right? And it's that sort of business or you're just respecting the room. So hopefully that answers your question, Matt, but I think it's it's just, you say personal, but I think it's it's just the conversations that you're having, right? Went on a bit of a tangent there, but I felt like that was necessary. Okay, keep the, I'm going to get to the questions in a sec. So... Okay, Hisham, I get it. This makes sense. What the hell do I talk about online, right? Th this is easily the most common challenge I get from recruiters, even more so in the current climate, right? So I'm going to just really dive deep now into like what you guys could be talking about. And I'm just going to give you some ideas and the conversations I'm having and, and hopefully this helps, right? But what I think is fair to say is there really is now starting to feel like a bit of a, a coronavirus fatigue and what i mean by that is like we've all we've all spoke like the amount of times that we've said the amount of times we said coronavirus last week or the week before i'd like to think is starting to 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 reduce like we understand what it is we understand what's going on and we're sort of going into um acceptance we understand we accept what's going on right now we need to focus on what we can control and we're, we're trying to innovate, we're trying to adapt, and we've accepted the coronavirus exists and it's a real thing and it's, it's, it's happening, right? So, and I, think like we, and I think we've seen an influx of people talking about coronavirus, this is what's going on, what do people think, is it like, da, 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 like coronavirus fatigue, that's 100% happening and we get it, right? And the next thing is, once you've spoken about work from home, this is my setup, look at me, this is the two screens that I've got, I definitely haven't got this set up by the way, and, I wish I had. Um, <laughs> but once we've done that, what are we going to talk about, right? Um, and that's sort of why I wanted to do this is because right now you may think I've got a lot of time. I've always wanted to sort of st start sharing more content. What can I do? This is a great opportunity. But once I've spoken about coronavirus, should I be speaking about the coronavirus? Or once I've shared people what my work from home setup is, what, what the hell do I talk about, right? So I'm going to try and give you some, some ideas. So just some really basic marketing principles, right? And you can all understand this. This is this is not rocket science, and this is all you need to understand. It is not complicated. Coronavirus or no coronavirus, what do we think makes good content for a second? Like, when I say to you, what do you think makes good content, what would you say? Put it, put it in the in the public chat. Like when I what do you think makes content good content? What comes up what comes up for you guys when I say that? please do share i'd love to just get people's perspective of this because i think this will be interesting i'm going to look at questions in in the meantime how do you measure personal branding okay cool some good ones in there solutions anything relatable relevance engaging innovative useful something that sparks debate yeah Advice for those who've lost jobs, stands out, something that adds value to my network. Yeah, exactly. So there's all different things here, right? But for me, I think the punchline of all this, right, it can, yeah, we want it to be valuable, stand out, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, something people can relate to, again, relevance. I think for me, what the, um, I should have moved. for me, again, we don't need to overcomplicate this, right? You may think you're salespeople, you're not marketers, but this, this, this is not difficult to understand. So for me, it really is simple. It's it's content that is relevant, right? When I'm when I'm on my phone and I see a post, I read something, I watch something, I listen to something, I think, oh, 
that's really relevant to my world right now or I can really relate to that. That that's what's going to give you the best possible chance of stopping your candidates and clients in their tracks to go, oh, this is interesting, what they've got to say or whatever, right? So for me, that's all I want you to think about when we're talking about content, what makes it engaging, blah, blah, blah. Let all you need to know is, okay, well, I want to make if I'm sharing content, I want to make sure that it's relevant to my target audience. And those that target audience is simply your candidates and clients, or if you're an internal recruiter, people you're trying to hire for your business. That's all it is. Content that is relevant for your target audience, right? Um, <coughs> okay. So in order to come up with content that gives you the best possible chance of being relevant, right? For me, and this is how I did it when I was in recruitment, you need to think about your daily conversations right now. This is what I want you all to remember. You speak to your target audience on a daily basis and you have even more access to them right now. The things that you constantly keep talking about on the phone, on your Zoom video calls, is exactly what we want to be bringing to life with your content and with your brand. These are the things that I'd like to think is going to give you guys confidence that other, like if you speak to a hiring manager that's really finding it difficult to onboard people remotely or whatever it may be, there's 100% going to be other hiring managers that are worrying about that and going to have that headache. So that, again, we don't need to overcomplicate this. Think about your conversations, the, the same conversations you're having. Like, that's what I want you to think about, right? And, and this is what's going to help us understand what you should be talking about. So for me, I'd really encourage all of you to do this. Write this down wherever it is. As I said, I'm going to send the, the slides. But just ask yourself this question and really think about it. What are the biggest headaches and challenges that your clients are facing right now? What are they worrying about? Yes, coronavirus. But how is this impacting their business? How is this impacting their life, professionally and personally? Same with candidates. What are their biggest headaches and challenges that they're facing right now? They might be made redundant. What are the challenges that they're facing? How has that impacted their, their life personally and professionally? Right? These are, if, if you really dig deep into these questions and think about this que these questions when you're speaking to people, which you'll be finding this sort of stuff out anyway as recruiters, right? So this is how I want you to think about the, the content you should be talking about. <clears throat> so what I've just tried to do here is just sort of spitball some of the things that come up for me in the conversation I'm having, right? So beyond coronavirus, yes, coronavirus is a challenge. Yes, coronavirus is a challenge for candidates. But how is this impacting them? Is it managing their teams remotely? Is it keeping their team's morale up remotely? Is it ensuring their employees' mental well-being is being taken care of? Is it onboarding new staff remotely? Is it getting the necessary tech delivered to new staff like laptops? Is it not having access to other business owners, hiring managers who have taken on staff remotely before? Is it work from home whilst looking after their children? Let's have a drink because I'm... That's how we dig a bit deeper into this. Beyond coronavirus for candidates, is it communicating with their teams effectively? Is it managing their own mental well-being? Is it being more? Is it being made redundant, not understanding where the opportunities are in the market right now? Is it not knowing how to make sure they're ready for the bounce back, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? <coughs> we get, we get. What I'm trying to talk about here is that you need to be thinking about the conversations that you're having, and these are the things that you should be sharing content about, right? Because a lot of people are going to be having the same headaches. Okay. And all we're doing here to tie this together, basic marketing, is we're starting to build out our target audience, client and candidate persona. And all a persona is in marketing terms is it's a semi-sectional representation of your ideal customer. So in recruitment context, it's your ideal candidate or client. And this, this is what all marketing agencies will do. For them to create content that gives them the best possible chance of resonating with people that they want to buy their product engage with their service, engage with them, is they need to make content that's going to be relevant for their target audience, for the people that they can serve or sell to, right? So all it is, is you guys starting to think about who your ideal client and candidate are. And because you speak to clients and candidates on a daily basis and you have your own networks, the same headaches that your hiring manager that you have a relationship with right now, it's very likely that a hiring manager that you're not working with that's on your target BD list is going to be having the same challenges. <clears throat> so that that's that's the content piece and like I'm just trying to tackle here like how to form ideas because that is the most common question that 
all of you sent me is how the hell do I come up with ideas, right? And and right now, for me, I think the ideas and always have been anyway in your conversations, but just bring into life the solutions that people come up with, the challenges, etc. So yeah, once you think about coming up with content ideas this way, you are going to be surprised how much you think about what you should be talking about online, right? So ultimately, it's, it's the video calls and the phone conversations that we bring to life. That's what we should be talking about. And my best advice with this is, actually, I think I might be able to share this with you now. Share. So I've never shared that. I've never used this handout, handout thing before, but you should be able to click at the top where it says chat, Q&A, you may be able to see polls or not, but you should see handouts. And I've just shared a handout called Facilitating Conversations. And you should be able to download that. Um, so hopefully you should all get, if, if someone can just mess, message on the chat saying, yeah, I can get that document or can see it, then just can you just message on there saying, yeah, I can get it. So that's great. But I've just shared a document which is which gives you my best advice on how you should be approaching talking about the topics that I'm just talking about and for me it's the facilitating conversations with your content right um and like so have a, have a read of that but that's that's like my best advice and <clears throat> quite simply I'd want to go into a bit more detail but I want to answer your your questions which I'm going to do in a sec um is ultimately because once you've got the ideas, likely your challenge then is what you're going to give me is Hisham. I don't want to come across the wrong way to my market. I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to come across unprofessional. So the advice that I've been giving all of my clients I've been working with, which has helped them overcome that challenge, is to facilitate conversations around the topics that you know are relevant and important to your market. Um, so for me, any sort of topic, you can approach it in a way of this is what I'm hearing in the market. This is what people are telling me. And then you pull it back on your network. What do my network think of this? What are people's thoughts on this? And it's encouraging people to engage and share their thoughts. So it might be, for example, um, everyone's working from home at the moment and I'm, I'm speaking to loads of candidates in my market that are finding it really challenging. The common challenges that I'm hearing from candidates in my market is that they find it really hard to, to be parents whilst also being, um, being a, a tech developer and they're finding it hard to manage their mental well-being, they're finding it hard to work life balance, whatever it may be. These are the challenges that I'm hearing. What do you guys think? How are other people coping? How are, what are the other challenges that people are going through right now? What do people think of this? Let me know your thoughts, right? And you can always, again, you're being that, that medium of facilitating conversations on the, the right topics, the relevant topics. Um, and what that means is you don't have to jump online and say, I'm right, you're wrong. Because that's where people get worried, right? If you jump online and go, this is why every single business should have had flexible working, I'm right, you're all wrong, you're going to be worried that other people are going to comment on that and go, shut the fuck up, basically. <laughs> to be really negative. And you're worried about that, which is fine. But this is my advice on facilitating conversations. It's to approach it with, this is what I'm hearing in the market. This is what people are telling me. What do you guys think? And you become the medium of this topic of conversation. And that's a good place for you to start to overcome that challenge of, I'm worried about people burying me online, which I totally get, right? So to, to sort of finalize the ideas part, this is something really practical that you can do at any time, coronavirus, no coronavirus. This is something that I've always got my clients to do, right? So we thought about what, make, what, what, are, what things are relevant right now, um, the conversations, that's what I've told you. But again, you speak to your target audience. So for me right now, I would literally get on the phone and speak to your clients and candidates that no doubt you're doing already and ask them the direct question of, look, I really want to make sure that during this period I want to give value to my network, help where I can, and one of those one of the things that I can do is share content that you should find useful or share content that you should find valuable. What content right now would you find valuable? What content right now would you find useful? in the current climate, you can go out, and this is another touch point for you and your, your clients and candidates, you can get on the phone and do this. Look, I hope you don't mind me giving you a quick call, wanted to check in, and also look, I'm planning on trying to do more LinkedIn over this period to make sure I do my part. Um, look, I hope you don't mind me asking, but what, what would you find really useful right now if I was to start sharing content on it, right? You could start doing this, you could go and ask five, 10 of your 
people that you have best relationships with, find out what they want, you share content about it, and guess what you can do then? Hey, Adam, you know that conversation we had the other day? Um, look, I've just put a post out about it. Have a look at it, let me know what you think, right? And then we're driving people to it, and it's gonna drive engagement, right? That's just a real practical advice, and another exercise that I want you all to do after this webinar. So, what have I seen recruiters do well so far in this that I think that I'm just going to give you some ideas now and then I'm going to answer questions. Ideas. So what I've seen that's been really interesting, um, hopefully you can see that um, okay, but Jamie Walker is a recruiter um, and what he's what they've decided to do is they, they've they recognized that people are starting to do obviously way more video interviews and a lot of people never done them before. So what they've decided to do is run a free video workshop or video interview workshop free one-on-one -on -one, whatever it may be interview preparation workshop wherever it may be free video and they're going to facilitate that and do that and give value that way that that is a content idea that's something you can do with your brand right now right i think that's a great idea i know that's I'm not sure how well you can see that so apologies i wasn't sure but basically ollie perry had him recently on a podcast webinar that i did um and he has teamed up collaborated with his colleagues and they are hosting a webinar a bit like this, which is not difficult to start or you could do it through Zoom. It's really easy. And they're just going to give value and answer questions about how to adapt and how to cope in the current climate in their markets. Right. Great idea. You could all do that. Tom Hurley. His event, unfortunately, got cancelled. So what did they decide to do? Make it into an online roundtable event. Zoom. Invite people to a video call. Get hiring managers, leaders in your market. Everyone's going through challenges right now. Let's be the place where we facilitate decent conversations around the challenges that are going on right now. You could do that with Zoom really easily. That is not difficult. Another great idea. Chris Sycamore, what he's decided to do is... He's called it the sycamore surgery. Um, so again, because now you may all feel like you have more time and you want to do things like this, he's he's made the decision to open up his diary at 2 p.m., booking free 15-minute uh, consultations uh, to give practical advice to people in his market. Great idea. You could all do that. Booking a meeting, engage with me, what you're worried about right now. I'd love to just give you my two pence, da-da-da, right? These are all great ideas that you could all action and you could all do for your markets. Definitely. So ideas that you could action just to finalize this is these are just some of the things that just came up for me when I was preparing for this. Starting a WhatsApp group of hiring managers in your market to collaborate, share ideas and challenges. Host a Zoom video call with candidates who'd be made redundant to offer um, advice on making sure their CV is in shape, LinkedIn profiles in check and are prepared for the bounce back. Open up your diary like Chris, 15, 20 minute slots to simply network, ask, your, ask um, you for advice and receive help. Host a virtual roundtable with senior people in your market to facilitate conversations around what the hell's going on right now, right? These are all things that you could do. I think they're great ideas. So next thing. So yeah, so just quickly, I'm going to go into questions now. Recap of tasks, recap of actions that I'd love you guys to take because for you to start building your brand, it's going to require actions is firstly, I would 100% recommend looking at your competitors and what they're doing right now. Just have a quick look. Yes, you've got to prioritize your time. Yes, you may think, I don't need to look at my competitors. I need to focus on what I'm doing. Yeah, that's fine. But have a look at what they are doing, and hopefully you will see what the opportunities are because there's a very good chance that all they're doing is spamming their newsfeed with jobs, right? And we know that doesn't make money. So I want you to have a look and go, right, what, what are actually people doing in my market right now? Not, not people that have a good brand, people that wake up every single morning that – are trying to take money out of your pocket because they're your competitor, what are they doing? Because you're trying to speak to the same people. Have a look at what they're doing. Hopefully that should motivate you. Get five content ideas directly from your candidates or clients by asking them the direct question of, I want to share more content during this period that you should find valuable, useful. What would you love me to talk about right now? Get five content ideas from your clients and candidates. I feel confident you could all do that. And then the final task with that is to post about them. Share one post over the next seven days that is giving value to your market. And if you're really worried about what this is, what it looks like, blah, 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 drop me a message on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm happy to help, right? But I'm very confident that you could do that and you should aim to do that in the next seven days. So 
I've got the most common questions asked here, but I'm going to dive into the, the Q and a guys. So if you, if you really want to get your questions answered, um, then feel free to, to get in these questions. So I start at the top <coughs> question from Baron Jeffries. What's your strategy for creating content for LinkedIn quickly? So for me, it take it takes time is what I'm just conscious of there, Baron is what I'm thinking about. Yes. We want it to be as efficient as possible time wise. So how I would answer this and hope this answers the, the question for you guys, um, is I would split up your time. So what I find is a lot of recruiters will go right on Friday, three to 4 PM. I'm going to, I'm going to write content for next week. I'm going to write all my content for next week. Um, I've blocked out time. I'm going to do it. And they go into that time. Um, and they're also using that time that they blocked out to come up with the idea of what they're going to talk about and write the LinkedIn post or write or do the video, or whatever, right? And what tends to happen is you go into that time and you look at your screen and you end up banging your head against the screen going, what the fuck am I going to create content about, right? So what to answer that question, Baram, is I would say split your time into, let's say, two 30 minutes, one 30 minutes on what common com- what what common conversations have I had this week that have come up more than twice with clients or candidates? Jot those down in bullet points, and they're your content ideas. And pick what one or two that you want to create content about. So just split up your time with thinking about what you want to say and actually writing or recording or whatever it is that, with the actual content. So think of the actual ideas and then separate your time with. Um, then making the time to actually create it. For me, there, there's just no shortcut. Like it takes time. It does. So I think what what will make it effective is just using the conversations that you have. And I know I've said this a lot, but I think that's the best place to start and will help it happen quickly because you're on the phone. So ho- hopefully that answers your um, question, Baron. So um, next one. So Matt Order, yeah. Are you on, are you sending these slides out? Yes. I will be doing that. Um, I can do that now, actually. So let me just um, preview. Yeah, personal branding. Right, so you should all get the um, slides. Okay, right, so I'm going to jump into this. Away from LinkedIn, what is the the most powerful social media platform you use to promote your personal brand? I'll be completely honest with this. Uh, That's from Campbell Barlow. I'll be completely honest with this, Campbell. I mainly use LinkedIn. That's, That's the short answer. So... And the reason for that is because um, that's where my target audience hang out. My target audience is recruiters. Um, and look, I think for me, we don't want to overcomplicate it. So my question back would be how much how much money or how much of your billings revenue is generated from LinkedIn, right? I'd like to think it could be quite a high percentage. How many candidates are you registering or getting through in mail? How many clients are you getting? Um how much of your how much of your billings is coming from LinkedIn, right? And if it's a pretty decent percentage, and you know, and that answer to that question is thirty percent, forty percent, sixty percent. All my candidates come from LinkedIn. Just focus on LinkedIn. Just focus on the one platform. We don't need to think about anything else right now. Like, and you want to start in the place which is going to give you the best possible chance of helping you make money because we want this to help you make money at the end of the day, um, where you're going to have the best possible chance of success. That would be my answer to that, um, Campbell. Martin Smith, how often would you recommend putting personal content out there? Good question. Don't think there's a perfect amount, but I think if you were to, let's say, on a weekly basis post twice um, and one post was making sure that we're talking about relevant things that are going on in your market right now. And the other post might be about documenting you personally, what your, how your business is going, how you're doing as a parent, managing your kids whilst being a recruiter once a week of either of those, I think is a, is a good blend, but honestly, I wouldn't overthink it. I really wouldn't. I think they, they, they cross over. I think it's about, it's about sharing that personal content through the business lens. It's both. I, I really do. If I think of, the post that I share, it's, I don't think about, oh, is this another personal post or whatever? It's, yeah, I think, I just don't overthink that. But I think one, one of each wouldn't be a, a bad place to um, start. So hope that answers your question, Martin. <coughs> Jordan Black, 
when doing an introduction video, if you are new to recruitment, do you feel this may discredit you? He has only done this for a few months. He can't help me. I totally understand that challenge, um, Jordan, and I totally appreciate that. What I would push back and say is what you say, how are you approaching it on the phone? I'm sure you're not, I'm sure you're saying that, um, look, this is, this is the company I work for. This is the types of people that I help. I've been here for four months. This is how I can help you. Da, 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 da. Like you, I'm sure you're not leading with or having the mentality that you can't help them. Right. So what I would say, Jordan, and this actually came out of a podcast that I did, which was really interesting. It was with a guy called, um, Lloyd, Hume, who works for a, a, a business called Trust in Soda, they're a tech recruitment business. And like that, this is one of the main challenges I get, Jordan, from people that haven't been in recruitment that long is they are worried of, uh, well, like you said, discrediting yourself or coming across unprofessional. So what Lloyd spoke about is that, okay, well, I'm a, Jordan, you may not have all the experience right now, but damn right, your business does, and your agency does, and your colleagues do. So you could lead with that. That, that's something you could definitely lead with. Hi, my name's Jordan. I've been working at this business for four months and I'm really eager to learn more about my industry. I'm actively reaching out to people to understand what's going on in their world, how they operate, blah, blah, blah. Um, and the business I work for, the brand that I work for, this is what we specialize in. Let me tell you about our business. Let me tell you about um, our colleagues and how they can help you in your business. And you're part of that, right? So I get sort of the the worry there, but hopefully that, that answers your question and gives you some um, ideas, Jordan. Um, so thanks, Ethan, very useful answer, over 50%. Um, okay, yeah, Campbell, so just quickly back to that. So Campbell's question on LinkedIn, should I worry about, uh, what, should I be thinking about other platforms or whatever? His answer then was over 50% of his placements come from LinkedIn. So honestly, guys, do not worry about other platforms right now. I know I saw, um, Hannah, you said about TikTok. I'm not, will TikTok take over the recruitment industry? I have no idea. I have no idea. What I'm focusing on right now and what I'd encourage all you to focus on is what what's current right now that that you could be, LinkedIn's not going anywhere, right? So how can you maximize this LinkedIn tool that all recruiters have access to differently? And that's what I'd focus on. Um, okay, right. So I've got some other questions in. Um, so let me just go into these questions, guys. If you really want me to answer some questions, then pop them in here. I'm going to just make my way through them. What would you recommend to do similar to the meeting clients candidates if you work in a different country to your market? Yeah, I, I, get, I totally get that. It's, it's, it's an interesting, that one. Um, I mean, even more so now when obviously you're not going to be like if you did go over there every now and again. So, yeah, sorry, Michael Wing, Wingham's question. What would you recommend to do similar to the meeting clients candidates? If you work in a different country to your market, I'd like to think you are that you would be doing some sort of video calls um, or these types of things, or you at least visit the place. If you don't, totally understand that. So, what I would say, and what I've seen work really well, Michael, is f let's say <coughs> you work you work the Amsterdam market, and obviously you're based in the UK. If you're seen as the recruiter that is championing the Amsterdam tech market or the Amsterdam financial services market, that is a good thing. So what you could say is, or how you could communicate that, that's slightly different, but you could say, I love talking to growing businesses in, in Amsterdam right now, and the economy is absolutely booming in Amsterdam. This is what I'm seeing, blah, blah, blah. Or there's loads of opportunity in Amsterdam right now. And, and just be the person that is putting your market, which is a different country, on a pedestal. Um, and I think that could be quite effective. So maybe approach like that. And if not, if you're doing video calls with people, stuff like that, you screenshot these things. And I always love communicating with um, Amsterdam business owners or whatever and, and get screenshots of these video calls and stuff like that. Hopefully that helps, Michael. Right, okay, yeah, so I've had quite a few. Let me just jump into... Um, um, me and two others setting up recruitment from scratch. No crack network. Da, da, da. When you're starting out, you need to be open to. Okay, cool. So, look, what I just want to do, people, as I appreciate, it's getting towards twelve. I'm, I'm going to run over anyway. I want to answer your questions. I've had a couple of questions on, like, how to measure this, right? And it's and it's completely valid. So, again, we don't need to overcomplicate this. So, the great thing with LinkedIn and your personal account is you get all the data, you get all the information, right? So, this is how I break it up. I break it up in awareness. So 
the things that you want to be looking at is how many people are looking at my profile? Is that going up? Is it going down? How many people am I connected with? Am I growing my network? And obviously that's going to be you being proactive, but also people connecting with you, coming to you and saying, I want to connect with you. So awareness, your connection, network-based growth, your profile views, uh, growth, and then um, the amount of people that view your post. That That's really easy. You get all that data, right? So how many people view my post, right? That's awareness. How many more people are, know, are knowing that I exist and know who I am? The next part is engagement, and then it's just likes and comments, right? Um, really simple. You can see all of that information. Um, I'd be measuring that. Am I getting more? Am I getting less? And it's good to know what is getting more and what isn't getting less because that's going to help you understand what you should be talking more about. Um, and then the last part is inbound opportunities, right? And I use the word opportunities when you're an actual sh human being, a person, rather than inbound leads and stuff like that is because – what I've realized is when, when you're a recruiter that starts sharing content and you're perceived as someone that's willing to have an opinion on your market, you'll be surprised with the opportunities that you may get. It may be that you may get invited to go on a podcast. It may be that you get invited to do a talk at a, uh, an event. It may be you get invited to a roundtable over Zoom. Inbound opportunities, right? Um, and then part of that is then obviously people messaging you. Trust me, this, this happens. This is how I measure it with my clients. And you will not forget it, right? Hi, hi, Jordan. Um, look, really enjoying your content at the moment. Would love to talk to you about how you can help my business or how to see if you can help me progress my career. That will happen and you will get inbound messages like that, right? Now, the challenge with it is you may get a lot of people that see your content, that don't engage, that don't like, that don't message, that you're impacting, but you can't see that and you can't measure that, which I totally understand. So the other thing that I'd, I'd sort of encourage you to sort of measure maybe mentally, is, yes, it's not data and stuff like that, it's more qualitative data, is if you're calling people and you're messaging people and you're speaking to them for the first time or it's existing clients or whatever and they say on the phone or they they mention it in a message um jordan um uh, what i was going to say is sorry if they mention it that they've been seeing your content or jordan i've been really enjoying your content at the moment or i've seen your videos you've done recently like make sure that you know those things and i, I just call those things small wins i always used to remember those things when i was a recruiter if you do i was doing the business development session i got through to someone for the first time and I said, hi, my name's Hisham Azuz. I work for Pavilion Recruitment. I'm a specialist insurance recruiter, blah, 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 blah. Hi, Hisham. You know what, actually? I do know who you are. I've seen some of your content. But obviously, it's hard to measure that. But I re you've got to remember those conversations, right? So the data points are awareness, engagement, and then the inbound opportunities. You can very easily measure these things. You will know these things. And they're the things that I'll be keeping um, an eye on. <coughs> So other, I'm going to get to few. I'm going to get through a few more questions, um, and then we'll end this. So I've had a few things. How much content is too much? Um, for me, honestly, I think again, don't don't overthink that. I think if right now, if you're not doing anything, doing one post a week is great. I think that's a great position to be. Starting is the most difficult thing. So starting with one post a week and building confidence and momentum from there is fine. You may, Your goal then might be doing two posts a week. I think the most important thing, rather than thinking how much is too much, is thinking about the stuff that I am posting or the stuff that I'm sharing. Am I making sure it's relevant to my market right now? That That's what I'd rather you focus on um, than is too much, too much. I think one post a week, great position to be in. Two posts a week, wicked, right? That's maybe what you should be aiming for, but... Yeah, don't worry too much about too much or too much because at the end of the day, I don't think if you're talking about stuff that's relevant, I don't think too much is too much if it's re if it's remaining relevant to your market. <clears throat> okay, right. So I'm going to get a few, a few more uh, question, questions on this. How do you – so how do you measure I've done that? Um, how can content be used to target uh, – so question from Tessa Fison – how can content be used to target the market? And most importantly, how can we get past vanity metrics and get shares, comments, and engagement? So Tessa, I would really encourage you to look at that document that I sent on facilitating conversations. Part of my advice around that is if you're, pro if you're with your content, you're sort of saying like, um, this is what I'm hearing, this is what I'm picking up on, this is what I'm seeing, and then you're putting it back on your network and saying, what do you guys think? I would love to get people's thoughts or um, how have people been overcoming this challenge or put, just posing a question to your audience with your content to, to sort of close it off um, it is a great way to, to drive comments and engagement.
right? Um, and just a just a quick one. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. But just a quick one on that, guys. I'm going to share with you. I think we're going through these things, so we're doing this. So one of the things that I'm just going to share with you now, just another document I always share with my clients is how to structure your LinkedIn post. So that's that's just sort of in line with um, your question there. So I've just shared it all with you. You can download it. Um, and I've just really simply just put in there how you should um, structure your content. And that's just going to be the best possible chance of driving engagement. <coughs> so make sure you will download that. And Tessa, I hope for that helps as well. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer. I'm just gonna answer one more question. Um, Elliot, you said how should you, how often should you post? Done that. How personal do you get on LinkedIn? I'm a big believer that people. Okay, so Nathan Adams, how personal do you get on LinkedIn? I'm a big believer that people buy from people, not mentioning jobs, etc. Do you think more you'll post about your life, the more people embrace you? Really interesting question. I think. I mean, I think I think it's definitely gonna contribute to that, Nathan. I really do think that. I think. At the end of the day, like what you talk about on the phone and you talking about your family, you talking about what you did on the weekend, these things come up in conversation. Like if you're documenting and sharing with your network that you are someone that has set the goal this week to run 5K or whatever it may be, I don't think there's anything wrong with that because these things are going to come into your conversations. So I think what you'll find, it, Nathan, what I'd really encourage you to do, and this will really hopefully motivate you, is, is definitely look at your competitors because what I find that ties in with this point is so many recruiters online don't look human. They all look the same. It is actually mental. Like, honestly, so many recruiters are just spamming their newsfeed with jobs. They don't look human. So honestly, Nathan, if there's anything that you can do with your content that makes me feel like or helps me understand what it might be like to work with Nathan, I think that's a great thing. And I think that's definitely going to help you. So hopefully that answers your um, question. So <clears throat> what so just to finish off guys um I'm going to I'm going to do more of these and it may just be loads more Q&A and answer your questions um I just honestly just wanted to say thank you I really appreciate your time first time I've sort of done a webinar like this on personal branding so honestly any feedback um is very much welcome if you want any help with anything um obviously with LinkedIn personal branding whatever honestly I'm I'm happy to help drop me a message. I'm here to help. Um, remember the tasks that I set you and I'll, I've, I've shared obviously the, the slide deck. You'll have all of that. Um, and I will try and sort of come back to the majority of you on the questions that you submitted. Just drop your note on LinkedIn. These are my thoughts or whatever. I hope that helps. But um, yeah, feedback's really welcome. I hope you enjoyed today. I really appreciate you um, joining me. Stay safe. Hope all your family is well. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to say a huge thank you. It means a lot. I'm ending this. Got a 10-second countdown. Thank you guys for, for dropping a message. I really appreciate it.